Surprise! I'm wearing the same shirt that I was last episode because I am filming this episode the same time that I filmed the last episode. Um, I figured I'd just knock out a couple in a row to see the feel of, of the program. So, the last episode I was talking about Superman for All Seasons by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. These two, great author and writer, uh, got together and did also some Batman work. And I have to say that overall their Batman work is their best work. They've done a Spider-Man book, they've done an Incredible Hulk book, they've done a Daredevil book, and I think, I'm just trying to remember, there's probably one more that I'm forgetting. But their Batman work, they've got, at I think, four different graphic novels. And here's my all-time favorite. You're absolutely welcome to disagree. Lots of people like the Long Halloween better, but uh, I like this one, and I'm going to tell you why. So this one was my first ever Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale Batman book. I think it was my first ever Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale book. And at very first, the very first time I encountered this book, I saw Tim Sale's art, and I was like, that's kind of weird. I, I don't know how I feel about this. Uh, as you can see, uh, I love this book so much that I have got Tim Sale to autograph my own copy of that. That is him. He wrote this to me. Dave, and that's Tim Sale, which is really cool. Um, so, the thing about this particular book, it's big, it's fat, it's a lot thicker than the last one, and uh, this is a great place to start if you're not really sure about Batman. Um, if you're not sure about Batman, if you've never seen a Batman movie, you've never kind of read a Batman comic, uh, you probably know who Batman is. He's Bruce Wayne, a billionaire, and also he is Batman. And the question that you have to ask when you're asking, like when you're looking at Batman, is who is Batman? If we were to compare with Superman, Superman, the real character is Clark Kent, and Superman is the costume he puts on to save the world. Think about that for a second. Now, when we're talking about Batman, he is Batman. Bruce Wayne is the costume that he wears. Got it? So Bruce Wayne is a character. The real guy is Batman. If he could be Batman all the time, he obviously would. Now, this particular book sort of explores that in an interesting way, and it asks the important question, why does Batman have a sidekick? Does Batman need a sidekick? Why does he need a sidekick? What's the point of a sidekick? Why would you hire a kid to work with you fighting crime and diving into you know dangerous situations and probably getting yourself killed? That doesn't seem very responsible, does it? And originally, if you read the kind of intro story here, uh, Jeff Loeb was asked to write this story, and he's like, well, this is stupid. I don't like the idea of Robin. This never made any sense. But as he picked away at this story, suddenly he realized, like, oh, I get it. Batman can't just do this by himself. Batman is a guy with no superpowers. You know that. And without superpowers, he comes up against limitations all the time. He's trying to save the world's most corrupt and messed up city. There are corrupt police officers, there's gangsters, there's the Joker, there's the Scarecrow, there's the Mad Hatter, there's all those other kinds of villains running around. Batman can't do this alone. He relies on Alfred to save him all the time. Uh, he relies on Robin later on, which we will kind of look at in a sec. He later comes to rely on Batgirl and Oracle and all these other casts of characters because, let's be honest, he's got an impossible job and it's pretty important. So this particular book kind of picks up where The Long Halloween left off. If you haven't read The Long Halloween, don't worry about it, just read this and then you can read The Long Halloween later. But the thing you need to know is that Harvey Dent is Batman's, was once Batman's best friend. Harvey Dent was the district attorney, and the two of them worked together to, you know, Batman would catch the bad guy, and Harvey Dent would help to prosecute them, and Commissioner Gordon was helping to run the police. So those three are, are an essential team, and they work together, and, and that's how kind of Batman worked for a while. But Harvey Dent gets half of his face scarred, and half of his mind scarred, and he is... Uh, kind of fractured in half, and he becomes Two-Face, uh, Batman's probably most interesting villain. Most people are going to tell you the Joker is the best villain. Uh, those are people who haven't read enough Batman comics, to be completely honest. Like, the Two-Face is the best villain because 
of this aspect of like Harvey Dent is his best was his best friend and how can you really like bring your best friend into justice and and how can you really fight crime against your very best friend from a long time ago um, is he really like gone forever is there a chance of redeeming him all of these are kind of important questions along the way so in this particular story there is a murderer who kills on holidays uh, this is suddenly hearkening back to a previous series of murders that took place on holidays. And so Batman is trying to uncover who is the holiday killer. And at first it seems like it might be one guy, the calendar man, who is bald and he has all the different like months of the year kind of tattooed on his hand and his MO is that he commits crazy crimes on days, on holidays. So calendar man seems suspicious but he's locked up. Then, you know, the Joker gets involved. So is the Joker part of this? Could it be Two-Face who's committing these crimes? Because the killer is killing corrupt people, particularly corrupt police officers, and that's something that Two-Face might do, or Harvey Dent might do. Or could this all be related to the, the Falcone Mafia because there was another series of murders that took place and involved them? And so Batman's trying to uncover this, and keeps kind of crashing up against wall after wall after wall because the Joker is loose and Scarecrow is loose and the Penguin is loose and the Riddler is loose and all those other kinds of things. And meanwhile, the Falcone mob is moving in and taking over territory and Two-Face is uh, making his life miserable also and, you know, might be trying to hunt down his ex-wife and, and all this other kind of stuff. So Batman is way over his head when a tragedy strikes at the circus which you probably know about, and this young boy, Dick Grayson's parents, are killed, and he is now an orphan. So was Batman. And so Bruce Wayne sees this young boy who is mourning over the deaths of his parents and feels a certain amount of responsibility to help raise him and to maybe help him. And this boy proves himself almost right away by helping to take down a criminal, uh, potentially somebody involved in the murder of his parents. And so the story kind of, they're forced together, and then gradually Batman comes to see that he actually needs a Robin. He needs someone to help him kind of stay in check, to, to kind of stop doing stop himself in those moments when he is most frustrated and most angry and most vulnerable and most most likely to kind of cross a line that he could never allow himself to cross. And you suddenly start to see that Robin is this balance to the darkness that is Batman that really makes a lot of sense when you when you think about it in the grand scheme of things and makes Batman a more interesting and dynamic character, which is probably why they become the dynamic duo, as you probably have heard of before. Again, it's uh, Tim Sale art, so it's beautiful, it's amazing, it's a little bit cartoony, but it's edgy, it's gritty, it's perfect for Batman, just the same way that the Superman one was perfect for Superman, and oh man, there's all kinds of death and destruction. And again, for people who don't like superhero comics, I just want to remind you that Batman is not actually a superhero. Yeah, of course, you could make the, the argument that having a fortune and being able to, you know, do all these kinds of things that Batman does is a little fictional and, and all that kind of stuff. But at truth, he's simply a detective. And this is a detective comic where he's unfolding this overarching mystery and it gets kind of grittier and grittier and grittier and darker and more mysterious. And, and uh, you're kind of left trying to figure out who did do it. And oh, it goes way back to the old days of Sherlock Holmes and Agatha Christie and all that kind of stuff. And I would have to say, like, if you only have money for one graphic novel, uh, ever in your life, this ranks in the top five as like best books you could possibly buy with that money. Um, great gift for Christmas, something to think about, or you know, Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or um, any other kind of holidays that you're about to celebrate. Uh, if you have a birthday coming up, or if uh, you know Valentine's Day is only a little while away, you could buy this for your Valentine. Um, amazing, amazing book.